Beautiful day with the sun out on the snow and everything. It was really nice, so welcome. Um, draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin and I want to add a couple. I will be on vacation uh, from the 22nd, which is Wednesday, through Saturday. Um, it's my birthday and I'm not going to tell you how old I am because I will not get any sympathy from this room whatsoever. <laughs> And that's fine, but I'm getting away for a few days just to kind of un unwind and relax a bit. Um, I love you all dearly, but time away is also important um, for me. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, Tammy will be preaching next Sunday. I will be here leading worship, but Tammy will be uh, delivering the message. So just an FYI on that. Um, Regarding the per capita, just want to remind you all that as you pay that, just mark your checks or your envelopes with per capita so we can make sure it gets into the right pile. And did I see your hand go half up, Marilyn? It, well, it was going to. Go for it. <laughs> so next Sunday we'll be setting up tables for the bazaar. Um, it's not, I'm not, sorry, not the bazaar, the soup luncheon. It's not nearly <laughs> as involved as the bazaar, but it would be nice to have... Um, been here to help um, bring a few out. It shouldn't take too long. And the soup luncheon is Tuesday, February 28th. And if uh, you would like to help and haven't been contacted, let me know. There is always room for another one. And I have a list of everybody what, what you have agreed to do that I'll put out there. You might check it, make sure I don't have you down for something you're not aware of. So. Thank you. Yeah. Are there other announcements? Oh. Did you have an announcement, Larry? Oh, okay. So you Sorry, put your hand up, and you put your hand up when I ask for announcements. You're gonna get called on. Just <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. No worries. I didn't go there. <laughs> it's all good. All right. If there are no other announcements, let's take a moment of silence to prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And since it's African American History Month, Black History Month, we all the songs and hymns today are African American spirituals. And I'll invite you to join in hymn number 775, verse 1 of I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Let us join together in our call to worship as it's printed in the bulletin. Prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you. As he who calls us to be holy, let us be holy in all our conduct. For it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Trust in God, who raised Christ, and gave him glory, so that our faith and hope is set on God. Let us worship God. Let us begin with number 352, My Lord, What a Morning. Please rise. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. We seek you on the mountaintop, O God, for we fear to face the city. We would rather be dazzled by your splendor on some Sinai than obey your commandments in the urban wilderness. We find it easier to worship the wonder-working Jesus than to follow the Christ who is obedient unto death. Merciful God, forgive our shallow ways. Help us to find you wherever you choose to dwell and to serve you wherever you choose to send us. The good news of our faith is this. We call upon God. We 
will be answered and forgiven. That promise gives us peace and joy. Thanks be to God. God. And as we reconcile with God, let us reconcile with one another through the sharing of Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. As we come to our time of prayer, where we have the opportunity to lift our joys and our concerns to God and to share them with each other, I want to specifically ask prayers today for um, Michael. He's been on our prayer list for a while. This is my ex. And um, prayers of gratitude that the new medication seems to be working. Um, it's not solving the, it's not curing the Alzheimer's, but it's slowing the progression, which I'm extremely grateful for, which makes it a lot easier to, um, to interact with him, especially when he calls at 2 o'clock in the morning. So um, I am grateful for, for um, medications that help people be who they are. So, are there others, uh, joys or concerns that you all would like to share with each other, with us, and with God? Okay. Then let's go to God in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the beautiful day, uh, a break in the snow, even, um, and the glories of your creation. We give you thanks, too, for the opportunity to be together as a family, as brothers and sisters in Christ, being able to worship you without fear. And we don't take it for granted, and we are grateful for that opportunity. <laughs> Holy God, we come to you at a moment in time in this worship service where we turn our attention to the needs of others, to the joys of others. We lift them to you with hearts open, knowing that you hear our prayers knowing that you answer our prayers even when we may not like the answers. Still, it is right, it is appropriate for us to say as we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we lift up Jim Hunsinker, David Young, the family of Jay Lish, Tammy and Doug, and Tammy's sister Deborah. We lift up Mark Carruthers and the Pocatello congregation, Steve Works, Chris Gentry, Norma Dean, Rosalie and Gary Gear, and Cheryl, Gary, and Stephanie Childs. And we pray to you, Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we looked up Tyson Hopkins, Cody Swears, Sharon's family, and Angie. We, we pray for Nicole, and we pray for Jana and Todd. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, we continue to lift up Kathy Daly. Dagmar. Junior Chug. Sheldon Main. Ken Lund. Alicia and Steve. Kathy Robinson. Billy Joe Skinner. And Steve Landyke. And we pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up Ross and Linda Walker. Rossi. Dixie Ledbetter. McKay Hansen and Damian Henderson. And we pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy. God, we continue to lift up the Belize mission. Victims of violence and disaster. Our country and its leaders. The ever-growing list of communities dealing with gun violence. We pray for the people of Ukraine, the people of Syria and Turkey. And we pray for peace in our hearts, in the community, and in our world. And we pray saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we take a moment to lift up those prayers that we hold so deeply within us that we are unable to speak them aloud. And all of these prayers we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join in our hymn of preparation, number 728, Somebody's Knocking at Your Door. This morning comes from the book of Exodus, 
chapter 24, verses 12 through 18. And this is from the new re newly revised standard version. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there. I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up, Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Look, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on top of the mountain in the sight of the Israelites. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And our next reading comes from Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling. Kiss his feet, or he will be angry and you will perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. And our third reading today comes from Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9, and this is also from New Revised Standard Version. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as bright as light. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, while he was still speaking, Suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my Son, the Beloved. With Him I am well pleased. Listen to Him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome with fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they raised their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about this vision, until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Friends, these readings are God's word for God's people, and we respond by saying, Thanks be to God. So I'm going to apologize up front here. Um, I have had um, two full days of meetings, Friday and Saturday, literally from 8 to 5, attending to some other business uh, on, a, on a denominational committee that I sit on, and so I'm a little bit spacey today. So if I stumble and fall, please uh, extend me a little grace and accept my apology for that. 
When I was a kid, I was obsessed with the Transformers. Do any of you all know what the, what the Transformers is? Do you all know? For the, okay. For some of you who don't know, for those of you who don't know, the Transformers are, according to the toy maker Hasbro, living human-like robots with the ability to turn into vehicles or beasts. I think that's kind of cool, actually. <laughs> to this day, whenever I visit my folks, I've been known to dig out my Transformer robots and invite my grandnephews and nieces into a time of play. And if they're not there, I still play with them. So there. Now the popularity of the Transformers is, a, is pretty broad based and over the years the franchise has spawned cartoons, live action movies, the latest one comes out next month by the way, just saying, um, along with enough merchandise which if it were all purchased would probably bankrupt a small country. It ain't cheap folks. Um, but the desire to change into something other than who we are is prevalent and pervasive in our modern culture. We are continually bombarded with ads for fitness products or diet plans. Buy our weight loss product and lose all the weight you want, 100% guaranteed. And, and you get your money back if you aren't happy. Purchase our particular brand of clothes, perfume, cosmetics, car, etc etc and they will change your life forever but somehow I don't think these are the types of transformations that the writer of Matthew's gospel is referring to so Jesus and the disciples are on their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival of Sukkot otherwise known as the festival of tabernacles this is a harvest festival, so it would have happened late summer. And it celebrates God's bounty and commemorates God bringing the Israelites out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. This is a celebration that still goes on in the Jewish tradition. And part of that celebration involves building shelters for people to live in during the seven days of the festival as they were bringing in the harvest. Nowadays, people celebrate this by building the shelters in their backyards. Prior to the destruction of the Second Temple, it was also one of the three major pilgrimage festivals where Jews were expected to travel to Jerusalem in order to properly celebrate the event. So while Jesus and the disciples are traveling, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up a mountain. And suddenly Jesus is transformed right before the disciples' eyes. And I love how the message translates verse 2, which reads, His appearance changed from the inside out right before their eyes. Sunlight poured from his face his clothes were filled with light. Can you imagine, though, how scary it must have been for Peter, James, and John to see such a thing? Then, to top it off, Moses and Elijah show up and start talking to Jesus. I would say that I would be scared to death if that happened to me. But, Peter takes a little bit of a different tact. Peter tells Jesus that it's really great that they're there, that the disciples are there to witness this, and that they should build shelters or tents for all three, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. One, one of my commentaries notes that Peter probably had the Sukkot festival in mind when he proposed this, and that his motive for constructing the shelters was his attempt to keep Moses and Elijah and Jesus on that mountain for an extended period of time. Now, up to this point, Matthew, Mark, and Luke record this event pretty much the same way. They have some slightly different focuses because each version was written for a different audience. And here's where it gets interesting. Peter, it seems, has crossed the line. Verse 5 and 6 of Matthew's version tells us what happens next. While he was still speaking, 
Suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome with fear. Whoops. Kind of looks like Peter is focusing on the way things have always been, looking backwards instead of forwards. He was, in effect, blinded by the light of the way things were instead of the way things were going to be. What God is doing here is affirming Jesus' ministry once again. God is reminding the disciples and us that Jesus is the pivot point between the Old Covenant and the new life embodied in the message that God has sent Jesus to proclaim. So of course the disciples were frightened, and who wouldn't be frightened if God showed up just to interrupt us and correct what we were saying? Scary stuff indeed. Now verse 7, which only appears in Matthew's version, tells us how Jesus reacts to the very real fear that his friends were experiencing. And that reads, Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. So ultimately, where does this leave us? Is the story of Jesus' transfiguration just something we hear once a year and then forget about it until it shows up in the lectionary the following year? Or is this an opportunity for us to think about how we might also be transformed? When we become followers of Jesus, when we start applying the teachings of Jesus to our day-to-day -day lives, are we truly allowing ourselves to be trans transfigured? Do we really want to be changed from within? Of course, that's what we all want. Or at least that's what we say we want. That word change is kind of a scary one, isn't it? Change doesn't come easy for many of us, myself included. Change means letting go of old ways of thinking, doing, and being. It means leaving those old thoughts, words, and actions behind and moving beyond our comfort zone. It means putting on our spiritual sunglasses in order not to be blinded by the light of fear and inertia. Since it is Black History Month, I'll share something with y'all that I seldom talk about. I was raised in a predominantly white culture with very little exposure to Hispanic, um, African, or Pacific Island cultures. Casual racism was pretty much the norm in my household, and the N-word was tossed around in daily conversations like it was no big deal. I honestly didn't think too much of it at the time. It was what it was, and I thought that's how everyone believed and acted. It wasn't until I moved to Seattle and began having interactions with others who did not look like me, whose skin color was not mine, that I began to be changed from the inside. People who I had been taught were less than me, not equal, or somehow less human than myself, all of a sudden became my neighbors. The barista at my favorite coffee house, fellow members of the church I attended, and ultimately close personal friends. They were just like me, with the same ideals, the same goals, the same hopes and fears. And in those sacred interactions, I was able to allow myself to be transformed. Siblings in Christ, it's so much easier to remain stuck in the old ways of speaking, doing, and being. Inertia and fear are very comfortable places for many of us, and that can prevent us from being God's hands and feet in the world. 
it's much easier to say that this is the way it's always been done. Well, it is what it is, and I can't do anything about it. It's much easier to say that than to use, and to use those attitudes as an excuse not to move forward, an excuse not to change, either as individuals or congregations. It's much easier to stay inside our comfort zones and not take risks. It's so much easier to ignore the promptings of the Holy Spirit than it is to move beyond the little bubble we create around ourselves and those people and things we love and actually do the work that Christ calls us to do. Fear is a powerful motivator to stay stuck in the old ways. What if we try something and it fails? What if other people laugh at us? What if that group of people who don't look like us really are the lazy, mean, less than human people many of us grew up believing them to be? Fear of the other Fear of letting go, of what letting go of our old attitudes might mean, ultimately becomes a poison that causes enormous harm to others, but most importantly to ourselves. And that poison prevents us from fully living into the teachings of the one we claim to follow. But when we are overcome with fear, just as the disciples were on that mountaintop, when the fear of the unknown is so great that we are crippled and unable to move forward, remember Jesus' reaction. He touches the disciples and tells them to get up and not to be afraid. And that's the crux of it right there. Change and the fear of not knowing what the future holds doesn't have to paralyze us if we remember that Jesus walks with us even today. This doesn't mean that every single new thing we try is going to work out. It doesn't work that way, right? And it doesn't mean that many of our fears lack validity. But knowing that Jesus still walks with us should give us the courage to lift up our heads and step out with confidence into places and situations that we otherwise might avoid. Folks, your task this week is to grab your spiritual sunglasses and not let yourself be blinded by the light of fear. Don't let yourself be paralyzed by the unknown. Jesus walks with us even today. So, be open to being transfigured, transformed, and changed from within. Be willing to do the work to step outside your comfort zone and be willing to do the work to open yourselves up to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And above all, when the fear and inertia raises their heads, as they inevitably will, Remember this. Jesus walks with us today, just as he did with his disciples, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing, to be afraid of. Amen. I'll invite the ushers to come forward at this time for the morning offering. God, 
we thank you for your generosity. And as a result of that generosity, we return a portion of the bounty that you have given us to you for the furtherance of your work in our community and in the world. Again, we give thanks to you for being so generous to us. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we profess the universal faith of the church by uh, joining me in the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 34 in the front of your hymnal. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn in your hymnals to hymn number 700. I'm going to I'm going to live so God can use me. spiritual sunglasses folks and don't let the fear the light of fear and inertia blind you from doing what God is calling you to do and above all remember this do not fear for God is with us to the end of the ages and may God watch between me and thee while we were absent one from another and all God's people said Alleluia Amen, Amen.